Kentucky. It's Flash Friday. It's on. And now. And now. Here he is. Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. Here are the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's Flash Friday from the Kentucky Bourbon Festival in the grounds of the Jim Beam Distillery. Headlights on across North America. Headlights on. Lay it easy if you see the headlights on. You know what to do. Show us your cans. It's that simple. We flash you. You flash us. If you see a nice pair of boobs, call us and let us know where you were, what you saw. Call 1-800-5800-TOM. And if you've got a nice pair of knockers and there's nobody with the headlights on where you are, call us at 1-800-5800-866. And we'll do our best to send some of our boys over there to flash their headlights. Let's get this thing going. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week, anything you think we should have talked about. You can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game, as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the telephone. Here's our telephone number, 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. This is Eddie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Doing good, Eddie. All right, I got a little story for you. Okay. I've been listening to you for about six months now. And at that time, when I started listening, I was living with my girl at the time and uh, and couldn't get her ass out of the house. So, so you do, Wait, so let me understand. Let me understand. You You wanted her to leave, and she wouldn't. And so, uh, did she, what, she said, why don't you move? Or what did she say? What was her response when you told her to get out? She was, uh, she basically was taking her time. She was gonna, when she found out she was getting out and it wasn't fast enough for me. Right. So I took your advice as far as, uh, turning off utilities and everything. And when I was calling up there, it was, uh, they were gonna cost it at, to turn them back on when I was ready for them. So what I did was, I went out to my, uh, fuse panel or my block on the house, shut off all the utilities, all the power, everything. She was go she came home from work wondering why everything was turned off, told her I couldn't pay the bills. <laughs> it's great. As soon as she <laughs> left the house, I turned them right back on. I had power T V everything. Very nice. Very good. It didn't cost me a dollar or my time and I still loved every bit of living there. So never, ever let them move in again. What are you doing, Eddie? Yeah, I was dumb. That's why I got her out. Started listening to you and light them on. Are you getting more ass than a toilet seat now? Uh, I love it. <laughs> well, I had to share that with you. It, just, it worked out too well. I love that. <laughs> well, cool. thanks, for the, hey, thanks for listening to me, Tom. Take me out with uh, Kobe. Take you out Kobe style. Here you go. Oh. This is about us. She's so special to me. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Yeah, the air I breathe. Meach, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. I'm my brother from a different mother. Richard. Hey, uh, I was, uh, yeah, I heard about you talking about Maker's Mark, and I was yes. there a couple of years ago. And uh, you'll notice I paused just in case you need to jump in there. Yes, thank you for th thinking about that. Yes. Um, anyways, you talk about handcrafting. They actually, not only do they hand, hand uh, put those things in kegs and put them in bottles, but they actually print, die cut, and glue on their own labels. So they actually print every label you see on Maker's Mark on the facility there in Kentucky. Is it, wait, Gary was just there today, is that I true? I was just there like a couple hours ago, and uh, he is indeed right. They uh, do, they, they hand print the labels. They, um... Somebody physically separates each label, so they're they're hand printed, then they're they're um, kind of cut out, and then somebody physically 
separates the labels. They're uh, put on by a machine, but then they're every single bottle that you see with that red wax on it, hand dipped. Like they do with uh, Knob Creek. Like they do with the Knob Creek. Which we saw last year. Right. But here they are. They're, they're, they're putting out like, you know, uh, hundreds of bottles per minute. And there's literally a woman standing there dipping the bottle in, twisting it, and then putting it back on the conveyor belt. It's awesome. You got you have to see it. I love that. Incredible. Totally yeah, handcrafted. And, and when you're there, you could actually dip your own bottle and label it yourself. That's right. Really? Yeah, you could put your name on the bottle and dip it yourself. Oh, my. So it's a great stuff. And for that other guy that called wondering about the perfect way to drink bourbon, if he takes a rocks glass, puts two fingers in the bottom of it, and drops one ice cube in it, it just opens right up. That's what you want. That's all you have to do. You just, don't have to flood it. Just a cube or two. You're good to go. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, hey, Tom, shots all around on me there uh-huh. right now, man. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Richard. Thank you. All right. Take care. Here goes Lee on the Tom Likas show from the Kentucky Bourbon Festival. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are you? Doing great. That's good. I was asking for your advice. Um, I went to the bar last night with a buddy of mine and his wife, and uh, we were drinking, you know, having a good time, and then, uh, you know, we were flirting with each other. And then a buddy of mine, he said, uh, yeah, my wife thinks you think you're good looking, you know, just kind of joking and jest. And then so I said, yeah, well, you know, don't drink too much. You might pass out and something might happen. And I think that planted the idea on her, and then uh, he passed out, and we might, then we ended up hooking up at his house later. <laughs> Do you think I should tell him or, you know, keep it Well, quiet? first of all, I I, I, I got to tell you, that's against the guy code. I, I You don't do that to a friend. I don't know why you did that. Yeah, we were drinking heavily, you know. I'm, I'm, no, I'm, no, but you knew, you knew, you knew before you had drunk heavily that this was a possibility, and and you remember what happened, so therefore you had the ability to stop it. You're absolutely right, and you know I, I feel really guilty about it. And I'm kind of I want to tell him, but a part of me doesn't want to tell him because I will, you know, ruin the friendship. So I'm just kind of uh, calling you to ask your advice as far as well. Uh, I I certainly wouldn't volunteer that information, and you never know when his wife is going. to... Here's the thing: you never thought about what happens if his wife gets a case of the guilt and tells him. That's that's what I'm thinking. Would it you know be better if I just you know stepped up and. Uh, you know, step up the plate and told him before his wife did, you know, being... No, you have to throw... No, you have to throw his wife under the bus. You have to say that she uh, jumped on top of you and uh, rode you like a say anything, and that was why you didn't tell him, because she was afraid their marriage would end. Yeah, yeah, that's... You know, I was, I was thinking the same thing. I just want to get an expert opinion on it. Well, I wouldn't say anything until uh, forced to do so, but, pal, you really violated the guy code... And if you lose this guy's friend or if he punches you in the face, you deserve what you get. You're absolutely right, Tom. Thanks a lot for the advice. Appreciate it, Lee. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Dan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Dan. Tom, you are my idol. You always have been. You, you, I, I, I so much appreciate your intellect, your logic, the way you can take an issue and focus and follow it through and, you know, call BS and anybody that, uh, you know, strays from your... Uh, your godly ways, so to speak. And my question is, I, I've also recently become a big fan of Adam Carolla. I yeah. appreciate his intelligence, his logic, and I'm just wondering if you're friends with him and, and what your opinion on uh, Adam Carolla. Well, is. I've known Adam for a long time, uh, but I used to see Adam more when he did Loveline because we worked in the same studio, even though Loveline's on a different radio station. Uh-huh. Uh, we were both uh, doing the show at the Westwood One studio, and uh, we were syndicated by Westwood One. And uh, so he would be down there to do the show, and I would see him there. But because he's on at the crack of dawn when I just about time I'm going to bed, right? I don't run into Adam. I don't see Adam. Uh, Adam, of course, uh, no doubt leaves the radio station as soon as the show is over or soon after that. And um, I uh, don't even work at the radio station. I work at an unnamed movie studio. Uh, so I'm not at the station. Do you, so, you agree that he's just an intellectual powerhouse like you are? I mean, just a real smart man? Well, I've never given Adam an IQ test, and, and honestly speaking, uh, I just am not up that early in the morning listening to the radio usually. Uh, uh, I'm frequently either sleeping till 9 o'clock or working early in the morning. I don't get to hear any morning radio uh, as often as I'd like to. Uh, but I've been a big supporter of Adam and Danny. And I'm, uh, you know, of course, in their corner, and I, I think that uh, the two of them sound great together when I have heard them together. 
and uh, you can count me as a supporter. And believe me, you know, uh, you know, I'm no fake when it comes to that stuff because there are people I have not approved of who do things that I don't approve of, and I've made my case. Yeah, somebody else tried to pick up the phone. What's going on there? Oh, he hung up. Okay. Yes, I'll hang up on him right now. Just beer in the middle. Anyway, uh, just to uh, get the record straight, I'm a big uh, supporter of Adam and Danny, Adam Carolla, Danny Bonaducci, who are on mornings on several of the stations where we're heard. We're on several of the stations where they're heard. But uh, we just don't see each other, and the, probably the primary reason is because we work um, nine hours apart. So we're not likely to be at the same place at the same time very often. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. It's the Kentucky Bourbon Festival on the grounds of the Jim Beam Distillery. Christopher on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, big hey. fan. I just started uh, listening since I moved to California. I'm attending Santa Monica College, and I'm a. Uh, we're going to be doing a report on the Tom Likas show on our Communication Ten class. Is that so? I. Uh, Figure, I got a couple of female members of the class, and we're going to have a discussion on uh, through communications, race, and gender in uh, the class. And I figured, hey, what better than to do uh, a show on and uh, on the Tom Micah show? Sounds good to me. So, uh, any chance I can get like a couple of your out, a um, couple of your clips and stuff, and uh, use for the report? Why don't you just uh, roll tape? Well. Not too many people we have recording tape anymore. So. Well, you know what I mean. Roll uh, digitally. Roll, roll some. However you record. That's true. I just wanted to make sure you know legitimately. You know, you know there are podcasts on the website uh, at uh, the, our home station, ninety-seven point one KLSX. Okay. okay if you go uh, to yeah, it, it, yeah, and then it tells you what the podcasts are all about. If you go to nine seven one freefm dot com and go to the podcast section and scroll through, you will find all our podcasts. And you can pick the ones that you think are most appropriate. Okay. Yeah, the uh, two females that we have as partners for this, uh, uh, for our uh, media um, report, is basically uh, never heard you yet. So it's going to be interesting to see what their outlook on your uh, show is. <laughs> well, maybe you'd like to hear them, uh, have them hear the, uh, when I say, you know what, God make them and try to look like a, a, a purse <laughs> or something yeah, like so that. It's, it's going to be interesting. It is. Well, let me know how it turns out, Christopher. Okay, definitely. Uh, can you blow me up, uh, Tom? Can I blow you up? Of course I can. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. You two are going to be flashing on the way down? If we see headlights. <laughs> well, that didn't take long, did it? We have a listener. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Listen to that. Last Friday has begun. Oh, my God. Hot tub. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. At 1 800 5800 Tom. Thank you for tuning in. Flash Friday. Wide open telephones. Evan, hello. Hello, John. Hello, Evan. What's cracking? Somebody's ass as soon as I get off the air tonight. And a couple bottles of bourbon, too, huh? That's right. Nice. I've been listening to you for quite some time, and I always wanted to know who's that announcer who's always up to date. You know, uh... Up to date? Yeah, he's always... From a little place in Kentucky. Oh, Joe Cipriano. That's him. Is he part of your crew, or is he part well, of the? Well, no, Joe. Joe is an independent contractor. You've heard Joe many places for years. Joe was the one and only voice of the Fox Network back in the early days of Fox, going up for many years. Um, more recently, he's been voice of NBC. You hear him on NBC. You hear him as the voice of many of the award shows on TV. Huh. Oh. So he's a big. He's a big wheel. He's a big deal. I have to keep a wider ear open there. Well, what's cool interesting? There. What's interesting is I have worked with all the big voice guys. Uh, ben Patrick Johnson, who was the voice of CBS Television, was the original voice guy for our show in 1994. 
Uh, Jim Cutler, who was the voice of ESPN, ESPN Radio, uh, CNBC, and a bunch of other channels. Uh, Jim worked with me in Boston. He worked at uh, WHDH, WRKO in Boston when I worked in Boston. So it's funny, when I turn on the TV or even my own show, I'm hearing the voices of all these guys I've worked with over the years. They're all uh, much bigger names than when we worked together. Huh, how about yourself? What was? Have you ever done like uh, voiceovers in your early days? Well, uh, no, I because I've always been a, a you know a, a, an out front performer more than a voiceover guy. I, I do commercials, I do a certain number of voiceovers, but it's not my primary occupation. I'm not out there auditioning every day for uh, gigs or anything like that. All right, but uh, you know, guess what? This is a living uh, demo tape. Every day, I'm on the radio. That's true. Hey, man, can you take me out with that, uh, the Texas guy, uh, shot his wife? <laughs> oh, 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 uh, Freddie, Freddie Wilhite. That's Freddie Wilhite. Take yeah. me out Freddie Wilhite style. Freddie Wilhite style, here you go. I shot my wife in the stomach with 38. Why did you do this? She enticed me and she ridiculed me throughout my lifetime. I'll see if she's alive. She's alive. Yeah. I think she did. <laughs> that still makes me laugh. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Danny. Danny on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? First time, long time. Doing great. Um, I have a uh, question for you. I'm actually All getting right. married next week. I want to know what you thought about that. You know what I think about that. Why do you call and say that? You know what I think about that. Well, I, well I've been with my woman for nine years now. I don't care. And by the way, the, the fact that you've done something wrong for since you were 14 doesn't mean you should keep doing it. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I love her and all. I mean, we have a kid together. Why'd you do that? Uh, well, actually, I was in high school. I was a kid having a kid. Why did you do it? Uh, well, I guess I was uh, young and dumb, I guess you could say. But right, I, there you go. So so essentially, already, we, we've seen that you've had bad judgment before. Why would we believe your judgment is any better now? Uh, well, I mean, I mean, I'm a responsible parent. I think it helped me out men more mentally as a person. Uh, again, so, you know, I, do you think I'm not as responsible as you because I didn't have a kid? No, I, never, I didn't say that. You can be responsible for yourself. But why do you need a crutch? <laughs> Well, actually, um, well, I'm, you know, I mean, my, 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 I guess you can say my wife and I, we're gonna, we're actually in the process of buying a house together and everything. Well, live it up. Yeah, and um, so. Why, I why you ask me why I think about this? Are you, are you pretending that you don't know what I think about this? Well, I mean, like actually, I still wanted to ask, like, it's uh, like when I'm married, what would be like, uh, what would be your honest opinion on how to keep a marriage? Like, uh, Why would you ask me that? I don't. I'm divorced four times. What makes you think I would know that? Uh, well, so what was the failure to your marriage? Because maybe I can. Uh, being married. What's that? Being married was the failure. Your failure was being married. Yes, that was the so failure. There, so there's no secret to staying married. It's just if uh, I knew it, why why wouldn't I do it? Oh, uh, I don't know. So your your failure was getting married. Right. The one, the best way to prevent divorce is to prevent marriage. <laughs> okay, yeah, I see your thought on it. All righty, Tom, just wanted to call this. By the way, do you are you aware of the percentage? Listen carefully now. Okay. Are you aware of the percentage of marriages that uh, end up in divorce among people who uh, got it together when they were teenagers? Uh, no, I don't. Eighty percent. 80%? Yes, sir. Pretty high statistic. Yes, it is. So go ahead, buy a house, entangle your finances. Just get ready. You're going to be a financial slave for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, Tom. Yeah, it's very, um, <laughs> All righty, Tom. Yeah. Thanks so much. <laughs> take me out to uh, uh, Columbine style. <laughs> what? Hey, can you take me out with wedding bell style? Wedding bell style? <laughs> yeah. I don't think we have wedding bells. Because we rarely uh, would advocate <laughs> weddings on this program, so I don't think we even have them. We have something for you, Danny. Here it is. All right. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> oh, God. Man. 
Oh, just shoot me. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here's Victor. Victor on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Victor. Hi, Tom Likas. I love your show. You are Thank the you. godfather of talk radio. And your last caller was an idiot. Yes. Okay, my question to you is, how do you feel about the New England Patriots and their whole scandal? I mean, they're a great team, and if there was anybody else, what would happen to them? Well, let's see how good they are when they can't cheat anymore. No, I definitely. And can you imagine if they made it and won the Super Bowl, how people would be outraged? Well, they already did that. No, I understand that, but this year, I mean, I understand they're trying to penalize them for next year, the draft picks and this and that, right. but it has no effect to this year. Well, that's right. I mean, I think Bill Belichick should have been suspended without pay, don't you? No, he, he's making a, a bunch of money to cheat. That, that's right. So, look, we've got, I, cheating, we've got cheating scandals now with three of the four major team sports in America. Baseball's got the steroid scandal. The NBA has the referee scandal. And we don't even know how bad that is yet. And now in the NFL, you got a coach who's been videotaping other people's signals. This is an outrage to the sport. I mean, football, I love football and everything, but how can you trust it now? Well, uh, you know what? Uh, my guess, most Americans love football so much they'll overlook this. But I'll tell you what, the New England Patriots are a bunch of cheaters. And, uh, you know, I, I certainly don't recognize any of their achievements at this point. And that's right. Just. Like, my opinions is like Barry Bonds, and, uh, you know, they're on a group. Thank you, Tom. I love it. And uh, can you please take me out, JFK South? Senior or junior? Senior or junior? Junior. JFK junior style. Here you go. one 800 800 tom is our telephone number. It's Chris. Chris is in Bloomington, Minnesota. He's listening to the online stream on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Chris. How are you doing? Do you care, Chris? Of course I care, Tom. I'm doing great. Now, isn't Bloomington the former home of the, home of the Minnesota Twins? Uh, that's correct. And actually, it's where the Vikings uh, used to play football before they built uh, the Dome. And it's now the home of the Mall of America. You got it. That's correct. Right. Very good. Okay, big question for you here, Tom. I want to hear what the professor's opinion is of women on MySpace. They're sluts. <laughs> okay. Which is why I like it, because uh, you know why they call it MySpace? That's named after the space between the woman's left thigh and the woman's right thigh. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Okay, so if say, what if you're... Involved with a chick or whatever. What if a chick has something on there private? Obviously, you know, she has something she doesn't want to show, right? Well, is it private from you? Well, no, it's not from me, but from in general. Like, I guess people that aren't on your friend list or whatever. Are you talking about uh, somebody who's your girlfriend or your wife or... No, I'm not married. I'm seeing a girl, but I'm not married. But uh, I'm on her list, but she has it private to other people. I'm just... I just want to get your opinion on keeping it private. Well, I guess it depends on who else can see the private stuff. Why does she need a MySpace page? Uh, you know, that I don't know. Well, I, I mean, being that she's hooked up with you, does she yeah. really need to be, quote-unquote, social networking? Uh, you know, to be honest, it's, it's probably to... Uh, it's obviously at the meat market out there. It's to meet other guys. Right. That's what it's for. So exactly. uh, my, my, what I say to you is have sex with somebody like this, but do not get into a relationship. Don't. Okay. Do not fall in love. Do not move in with. Do not marry any woman with a MySpace page. Okay. Just have sex with them. Yes. I, I have a feeling that there was the potential that you would fall in love with this woman. Uh, no, I started to like her, but trust me, I listen to everything you say. I do the old Tabasco trick. I, I wrap it up every time. I'm no dummy. I just wanted to get uh, get my teacher's advice on this. Oh, yes, yes. Well, she's there to be used sexually. Uh, I'm sure other guys are doing it, too, but that's fine because you're doing other chicks, right? That's right. So who cares? 
By the way, who cares what her private or public MySpace is? As long as you're getting your peace, why do you care? And I, could, I know why you care. It's because you were starting to wonder whether you loved her. Well, get off that right now. You, you cannot fall in love with a woman on MySpace any more than you can fall in love with a hooker or a stripper or any other slut. Okay. Will do. Yeah, I need yeah. to get it. Uh, they are there for your sexual use and abuse. Yeah, we need you up here, Tom. It's run by a bunch of right-wing wackos up here, man. Yes, yes, I know. I know it. All right. I love the show. Take me out. Uh, just blow me up, Tom. Okay, here you go. Tom Likas. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. Women go into a relationship and get upset because the man isn't fulfilling this fairy tale romance. Yeah. But they're not interested in fulfilling the other side of the fairy tale romance. That's right. Barefoot, pregnant, fellatio on demand. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How are you? Great. Question. How come you can't say the name of the studio where you're broadcasting from anymore? Well, we've talked about that on the air many times, so you must not be a regular listener. But, well, I am, uh, but I don't listen every day. Okay. Uh, we got a uh, cease and desist letter here at CBS. From the uh, legal department of the studio. Uh huh. We we're told to stop saying the name of the studio on the air. They were concerned that people would be, uh, would believe that uh, our show was somehow produced by that studio. And they were concerned about negative publicity that could be attached to it. Well, you know, the way this business works is TV shows and stuff like that are produced all over town. I mean, you know, like the CBS lot on Beverly. Right. There's a ton of different networks that do their shows there. Of course, American Idol was done at CBS Television City. You know, it's it's like, I guess years ago what happened was certain companies felt that certain TV networks did a better job with the color. And so certain performers used to do that. You know, they would say, well, I want to have my show shot here. I want to have it posted over here, what have you. And there's a big business of people that drive tapes back and forth because at one point I worked in the sound department at Columbia, which is now Sony. And we would get tapes, you know, from different places. And you couldn't do anything until the tape showed up. Well, also, uh, Fox has only been a television network for a little over 20 years. Um, for example, I don't think they've got the kind of studio facility to do a show like American Idol, which requires, like, kind of a concert-like setting. You need a big audience. Right. And Television City uh, has a lot of these capabilities that other studios don't have. So they do a lot of shows. Uh, they do Bill Maher's show for HBO. They do lots of shows. uh uh-huh. And uh, I think that's part of the deal, that uh, the networks uh, have an only limited amount of studio space, and uh, their studios uh, are only capable of doing certain kinds of productions, and sometimes they need to go out of the studio and do it somewhere else. The other thing that bothers me is a lot of stations, when they, a lot of radio stations, when they do their station IDs on the top of the hour, they will mention the corporate ownership. In other well, words, you'll hear... I, know, I can tell you why they do that. Okay, why? <laughs> For Wall Street. Is it? Yeah, of course. Well, the thing that would bug me is, look at how many radio stations Clear Channel owns. I'm not sure if I was the owner, I would want everybody to know that I owned all these stations. Oh, they want Wall Street to know that. Yeah. But, I mean, it's just gotten out of hand. I don't think that these companies can effectively handle owning eight stations in one market. Well, I guess only time will tell. Uh, by you know, I do know that some stations are eliminating certain positions and reducing the number of, let's say, I don't know, engineers. Yeah, other that's, important that's positions. what I do. I'm an engineer. But, for example, in L.A., Channel 2 and Channel 9 are combined. 11 and 13 are combined. So you have one news department that supports two stations. Right. So there goes half the jobs. Half the jobs, but and people working twice as much. Yeah. I mean, between Channel 2 and Channel 9, they've almost got a newscast on constantly. That Well, that's right. But but in reality, I think there's probably 
at least as many jobs as they were in the news business 20 years ago in, in L.A. Uh, because uh, back before 1990, Channel 9 in L.A. didn't have so many hours of news on. They had like one newscast every day for like a, an hour at night, and that was it. Yeah, well, when Disney bought it, that's when they started doing the three hours of primetime news. Well, and that's when they – look how many people they hired back then. I know. So there were a lot more jobs for a while. Yeah. Now there's a technology that you may or may not be aware of. It's called Parker Vision. This is, allows you to do a newscast with one technical person. And well, you know, it sort of automates the news. Well, uh, that, that was pioneered, I think, at the Weather Channel. But see, here's the problem. The stations love to do breaking news, and that technology does not make breaking news really possible because everything has to be pre-produced and pre, pre-scheduled in effect. Well, you can't hide from technology. I mean, TV and radio stations are going to do as much as they can for as little cost as they can. And by the way, I think that's true of companies. Uh, but eventually you start pressing up against the outer limits of what you can do. Uh, a good example of this has nothing to do with the television business. It's the Mattel Toy Corporation, which uh, sent all their toys uh, over to uh, China to be produced. And uh, now you see the result of that. Kids are licking toys that contain lead. And, uh, In other words, they've gone too far. Right. I also have read recently that a lot of the outsourcing to India is starting to go the other way because so many customers have complained about the quality of the service. You know, one trick, you know, like um, obviously, you know, Dell does that. If you buy a computer from Dell and you buy a business computer, then you get English service from America. Yes, well, I uh, I got rid of I uh, I'll be honest with you, um, I used to own two Dell computers, a laptop and a desktop, and uh, because of my experience of calling Bangalore and asking for help, um, I won't buy Dell computers anymore. Period. I won't buy them. What I will buy? not buy them. Uh, one computer I had uh, made for me by the IT guy who does IT work for me at home, mm-hmm. and I have a Toshiba that doubles as a television set. Okay. I mean, generally speaking, Dell made good stuff. They did, but when they sent all the uh, tech support over to India, I was done. Yeah. And by the way, I, I have told that to other companies, uh, DirecTV, American Express, a lot of them do it. And uh, I just stop, uh, or, or stop doing business or reduce the amount of business I do because I don't want to be talking to somebody in India when I've got a problem. No, it's, it's bad business. But well, the, but the thing is, they find that out by trying. Yeah. Before they went out of business, TWA, they were not outsourcing to India. You know what they were outsourcing? Remember the old uh, airline, Transworld Airlines, TWA? Yeah. They were outsourcing to prisons. <laughs> now imagine, you're making a reservation, you're giving somebody a credit card number, and the person on the other end of the phone is in prison. How easy can you make it for them? Well, look where TWA is now. By the way, there's a joke there. Do you know what airline the Pope flies on? <laughs> TWA, top waffle board. <laughs> well, anyway, it's good to talk to you. Yes. Of course, I'm the guy who used to call the Larry King Show, and I used to ask him that question about uh, about beverages and flight. Yeah. I used to call the Larry King Show. I used to ask Larry if he preferred Pan Am coffee or TWA tea. For nights. Nice. Well, that was uh, a long time ago. We could sit here and reminisce about the old days. Yes, but uh, uh, when are you going to come to, sh- to Reno and do a show? As soon as the radio station pays our way. Yeah. People think that we just like uh, sort of spin a wheel and we say, you know what, Kentucky, uh, this is all driven by the dollar. You know, somebody buys advertising and then pays the freight to, to send us places. No, Gary, I and I, it- Gary and I aren't sitting there on Priceline trying to figure out places to do the show. It doesn't work that way. Hey, Gary, let's do our show from... Uh, uh, Eugene, Oregon. Let's see what the uh, airfare is to Eugene. We'll go up there. We'll do a show. Yeah. Find me a bar where I could do a Flash Friday. It doesn't work that way. The way it works is people who want us to come call us, and we give them the cost of sending our team to town to set up the broadcast. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sitting here looking at three other people who, who are working on this show. Right. And they're all in hotel rooms, and they all have plane tickets, and they all carry a certain amount of equipment, some more than others. So it costs a few bucks. Yes, it does. So the reason we don't come to a particular city is because the radio station hasn't invited us. But I think it's an excellent promotion for the station. Well, that's something you need to take up with the station. Mm-hmm. We go, when, when somebody offers the right amount of cashola, 
uh, to pay the cost of doing business, we come. So you're willing to do your show from anywhere as long as somebody else pays for it? As long as the cashola is there. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I'll have to talk to those people about it. There you go. Anyway, it's good to talk to you. I know. We did go to Reno once. That was the weirdest crowd we've ever seen at a live event. And because we're on AM radio in Reno, you know, you had that group of people who normally are conservative talk radio listeners with the cowboy hats, and they were kind of tuning down the dial. They having to stop on our show by accident, and they were completely flummoxed by our show. They didn't know what to think. But I go back. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Chris on the Tom Likas show from the Kentucky Bourbon Festival. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Chris. Professor, I just want to wish you a happy Flash Friday, sir. Why, thank you, and the same to you. Thank you very much. You know, Tom, loyal listener, but I gotta say you're wrong about the New England Patriots, man. How so? Well, I'd like to know where you get they got caught for this particular case of cheating to none of their Super Bowls mean anything anymore. That's my opinion. Well, if I could point out an observation about a flaw in your opinion, you told an earlier listener that uh, he was saying every team does it, and you're like, well, they haven't been caught. Prove it. And right. I'm asking you. Oh, I'm not suggesting the NFL should take back their championships or – I'm not suggesting that. I'm just saying, as a fan, I don't recognize it. And uh, I also don't recognize Barry Bond's record. Even though he probably wasn't taking steroids for all 779 home runs or whatever it is, uh, I don't recognize his record. I don't care if he did it sometimes or didn't do it other times. Doesn't matter. I don't recognize it. Baseball recognizes it, but I don't. It just doesn't make sense to me how everyone's saying, because they've been caught this one time. They're guilty here. But you talk about the well, Lions Bill Belichick. Packers. To be fair, Bill Belichick also said that it was uh, it was kind of normal uh, uh, course of doing business. They, they he didn't say how often they've done it or what games they did it, but he seemed to he seemed to be saying that it's something he'd done many times. But I'd like to make the argument to you that every team does it, which I believe they do. But you well, you'd it. like to, but you can't. We only know of one team that does. It. You can't make the argument that. They've been doing it all along. When you I haven't tried to. It's it's only my opinion, and uh, I'm entitled to my opinion. I'm not suggesting that the commissioner of football, Roger Goodell, uh, find them for games where they can't prove that the uh, Patriots did it. I'm not suggesting that. But as a fan, I have every right to decide whether I think they've cheated in the past or not, and I think they have. That's absolutely right, Tom. But do you get the feeling, because I get the feeling, that they're the top dog and big targets like – Always get shot at. Well, you know what? As the top dog, it's that much more important that they obey the rules. They're going to be under a microscope, and that's the way it should be. But I'm thinking, like, the Miami Dolphins last year, they won against the Patriots using pregame prep where they recorded Tom Brady's audibles and all that stuff. They didn't get in trouble at all. Why are the Well, I do, I do not know the ins and outs of the NFL's rules, and I think those rules uh, should be followed to the letter uh, for the game to maintain its integrity. And if you have an objection, you should certainly get in touch with the NFL and let them know what you think. But uh, yeah, Bill Belichick did not even deny it for a second. Didn't fight it. Didn't appeal. Nothing. He did it. He admits he did it. He's well, the only not- one who has. It's my opinion with Belichick, there's always a means to an end. And if he's... Well- not dumb enough to get That's also true of bank robbers, junk bond traders, and everybody else has been put in prison. Bottom line. Our email address is Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.